So this is my power, uh, my solar generator that I built in a video a few few videos ago. And um, I am in Texas and we just went through those terrible ice storms and had no electricity for a few days. And, you know, my house actually got down into the 40 degree Fahrenheit range. And it's pretty, it was interesting to say the least, but I have a power wall, I have a solar generator and, you know, I was able to keep my fridge going and, and charge lights and, you know, I really... I was better off than most because of my power wall and my solar generator. So I did use this for a few things. I actually ran a heating blanket off this, no problems. And heating blankets actually don't draw that much current. Um, so, you know, we, we made it. Um, so, you know, most of the damage is over. Electricity is restored. And I try to charge this up and it refuses to charge. And I don't know what the problem is. It will discharge the 110 volt circuits turn on it pulls a current you know it will char it will you know the ha you know the the inverter is working it will supply current but it will not accept current um so of course i immediately thought oh you know my charging brick is bad and then i tried my bench power supply and tried everything you know i even thought for a, for a second my meter that i was running everything through was bad and of course i ignore you know, in my gut, I know it's probably the BMS, but I ignore all of that um, and try everything else before, you know, ju you know, giving in and saying, conceding it's probably the BMS. Maybe a balance wire is, is I mean, maybe the balance wires have come loose somehow. Um, I do find that strange, though, that it will discharge, but it won't accept a charge if the balance wires had come loose. But, you know, it, it, you know. Most likely at this point, it almost has to be a BMS issue. I have hooked up power directly to the battery um, um, and, and it will not take it will not take a charge. So it, at this point, it must be the, the BMS. So um, I have to, I'm, you know, I do have to disassemble this. The battery is on the underside. However, I did build this to be taken apart. Um, I used connectors literally on everything even the little 12 volt connectors everything has a connector somewhere so um let me disassemble this and then let's check out the battery and see if we can find out what the problem is Okay, we have the board out. Here's the battery. Let's lift this battery out and just see what's going on here. This is a large battery. It was designed to just fit in this case. Uh, so let's lift it out and see what we are dealing with here. That is heavy. Let's get the case out of here. Okay, let's take this foam, which just protects it a little bit. And here is the battery. Now the BMS is connected. I was kind of expecting this to have I was kind of expecting this connection to have popped loose, but it hasn't, so it's surprising. I really expected the balance leads to have popped out of the out of the um, out of the BMS, but it hasn't. So that is weird. Let me use this foam to protect the underside as I flip this over here. Um here. It, and I always have an ex a secondary balance lead um, so that I can plug in a balancer. And actually, let's plug in a balancer and see, does the external balance lead show, show voltage on everything? Oh, interesting. I don't know if you can see what has happened.
what has happened is we've hit the cells are so out of balance that we have actually hit the BMS has cut off charging because we are so out of balance. Look how out of, but that is some of the most out of balance cells I have ever seen. And actually it makes me think I need to check for, for broken fuses or things like that because to get out of that, out of balance that much, um, probably means there's cells that are not even connected. Um, it's probably some broken fuses or something because that is a heck of a voltage difference. So um, turns out the BMS was actually doing its job. It's just that it, it shut us off because it looks like cell 2 has, has hit 4.2 volts and, and turned us off. Um, but yeah, it definitely looks like we have an issue with maybe cell 3 and cell 4. Um, those are particularly low. So those might have some sort of damaged fuses. And, you know, this battery is, um, you know, it is a soldered battery. And, you know, on something like this nowadays, I would probably do it with, um, I would probably spot weld it. Um, this is just big enough where I kind of like having fuses, but, you know, to be safe, I do like having the fuses to be safe. But when you're carrying around in a case, there's always a risk of breaking fuses because you're moving it around. So this is just at the size that... Um, yeah, I'd, ha I'd, I'd worry about, uh, you know, yeah, it's just at the size where I don't know if I want to spot weld it, but um, yeah, I guess, I guess I need to do an inspection and find out if I have broken, broken cells and, and figure out, um, you know, which, which are my really low packs and see what I can see. And then obviously I can rebalance it, but um, that is interesting. And obviously this BMS is not doing a very good job of balancing because um we're miles out of balance here so yeah well that's that's the uh mystery solved now i just got to uh, figure out why So I tried to balance this pack out and honestly the balancer after uh, the balancer ran for like a day and a half and the pack was still not balanced and honestly it seemed like some of the voltages were drifting faster than the pack than the balancer could balance. So I started to wonder if I had self discharging cells in here. So what I did is I had sort of been charging up the different packs. Um, with a bench power supply and I would kind of got them all above four volts, but not not quite, you know, they were not all in balance yet. But what I did is I cut all the series connections on these packs. So these are now seven individual batteries that allows me to balance them and re I can use I can use wires to put them back in parallel and let them balance naturally in parallel rather than in series. But, but to check for self-discharging cells, I sort of, I wrote these voltages down three days ago and then I left on a business trip. And I'm back 
And let us just see, you know, if any of these packs have drifted. Um, this one, we're at 4.01, 4 4.0, 4.0, With all the flux on the solder on these batteries, it's sometimes hard to get a good reading. 4 4.15. 4.15. So, None of these batteries drifted more than 0 0.01 volts in three days. So I do not think we have a self discharging problem. These are very consistent numbers. That's fine. Um, I think the issue is I have capacity differences in these packs. For the batteries to get that out of whack, I think that some of these cells must be lower capacity than others. And I did not test these cells before I built this. These cells came out of good known scooter packs, but some of them must have been probably more cycled than others and there must be some low capacity cells in in some of these packs here which is why when you when you discharge they they get out of balance what i am going to do is i am going to solder balance wires onto these packs and put this whole thing back in parallel let it naturally level it out level out at like 4.1 volts put my bench charger on it take it all take all the packs at the same time up to 4.2 volts so that they are in perfect balance. Then I'm gonna re-series these packs and I'm gonna hit it hard with a heat gun and run them down and see um, um, if we get out of capacity once this pack is rebalanced and put back in service. We will see if we have a capacity issue or not. But so for now, I'm, I'm gonna put balance wires on and, and put a bench power supply on and it'll probably take at least 24 hours, if not longer, to for this battery to naturally balance itself. Um, but we'll do that and we'll pick up tomorrow and see what happens. Cells are all linked in parallel and uh, balancing up. Um, they are almost balanced, um, but I'll probably leave them for a few more hours and get them really close okay I have um, put in the bridges to reconnect the um, the two bus bars and you can see right now it's pretty well balanced um, 4.11 pretty much on every cell except for the last cell maybe but um, that is pretty nice so I'm gonna top it up and then uh, run it in the uh, solar generator by the way, this RC Toolkit um, charger is pretty cool. It, um, it's doing a top balance right now. And um, the, ce the cells there that have the white box around them, those are cells it's done charging. And the ones without a white box are the ones it is charging. So it visually indicates to you which ones it's balancing and which ones it's done balancing. And um, you'll see that those boxes jump around as cells sort of hit, their, hit the 4.15 voltage that it's set for. And then they might sag down a little bit and then it'll jump back on charging those cells and, and until everything sort of settles down and balances out. But it's pretty cool how it um, uh, sort of uh, in visually indicates which cells it's done charging and which cells it's still charging. Okay, heat gun test time. Um, I'm going to run this for a couple hours and drain this down and put a slow mo on this, or uh, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. All right, we've been running like an hour and a half, and we are down to 
five volts on every cell. The difference is 43 millivolts. But these cells aren't too bad out of balance. This really isn't isn't too bad. So I guess I guess there isn't a problem with these cells or capacities. Um, let me actually turn this off. You know, I did have, I did find some broken fuses, and I did find some cold solder joints. So, it could just be some of those, um, or I could have a few cells with a little higher internal resistance and over sitting for a year. Some of the cells drifted, um, but I guess we're back in balance, and I guess everything's okay.